Hi, I'm Lee Tushler with EE World and Design World. I'm here with Dan Carnavalli from the Eaton Pittsburgh Experience Center. Now, if you've ever gone through a basic physics course, you, you'll know that quite often they try to explain the concepts of voltage and current with water flow. And Eaton has actually physically made a demonstration that does that. So Dan, tell us a little bit about uh, what you've managed to accomplish here behind us. Thanks, Lee. So yeah, here at the Power Systems Experience Center, what happens is we'll have fifth graders to CEOs, and a lot of them don't have an electrical background. So in this demo, what we show is voltage is similar to pressure, thinking about water flow, and current is similar to the flow of the water through the pipes. Uh, we usually give the example, we used to give the example of a super soaker squirt gun, and when you pump it up, and the more you pump it up, the further you could squirt across the room, but we thought it'd be neat to kind of build a demo where we can actually show that in real life, and it's worked out really well. So let me show you how it works. Perfect. So as I turn this on, you're gonna see water flow through this top pipe, and you're gonna see that current flow, water flow similar to current flow through a power system. So over at the end over here, we have water flowing into this this water wheel here and that simulates a motor so water flowing around this circle here and actually pumping in it and it's really just disrupting the current a little bit what that disruption is we call that inductance so so a motor requires is an inductive load and we're simulating that and we could show the current flow here in terms of volume of water 4.16 gallons per minute and we'll see that the same or it's very similar flow comes out the other end in gallons per minute. And so again, just a little bit of disruption, in our case, a little bit of what we would call resistance in that path. The next part of the demonstration would be this column of water here. And we're gonna simulate voltage by filling up a column of water. The higher this column of water goes, the more back pressure we have on this. And you can see the amount of flow right now if I, if I over-exaggerate that by closing this valve, I'll fill that column up even further. Watch how much pressure, how much voltage comes out of this end. So the higher the pressure, that simulates higher voltage. So high tension lines out on the power system, you see very high voltage. Now, this one, we simulate current coming into a node, we call it, or water coming into a node, and the water divides according to the path of resistance. So in this case, this valve and this valve are both open. So if I measure the flow, I see 4.8 gallons per minute, 2.4 gallons per minute, 2.4 gallons per minute. If I close one of these valves or, or reduce the flow, not close it all the way, I could see that as this balances out, we'll end up with about 1.1 gallons a minute, 3.6 and about 4 point, or it's 0.8. 3.6 and 4.4, 4.5. So it still adds up to the same up here, and we call that Kirchhoff's current law. So current divides according to the path of least resistance, but it also is summed in a node. So the total current going in equals the current going out, similar to flow. If I shut this one all the way off, all of the current goes this direction. Parallel resistors, the current will divide according to the resistance. Series resistance in this path we can divide across each resistor and we'll see a different voltage drop if the resistors are different. But if they're the same, we get the same pressure or the same voltage drop. If I change this one so that I get more pressure at this point, I can see my pressure here build up. I'm gonna drop more resistance, more voltage across this resistor and lower across these two. And I'll get down to my point down here, which is ground and I'll have no pressure because that's my bottom of my total voltage divider. So again, voltage in series, voltage divides according to the resistance. In parallel, current divides according to the resistance. Finally, this one shows a path of power flowing from the total, total utility company, for example, coming up here and coming down and going into this tank and then coming down here to our load. Now, if we have a parallel path, we could fill up at a different rate, maybe or at the same rate, a storage tank. And in this case, this storage tank would simulate a capacitor. So we could take our watts and our VARs from the utility company and fill up this tank and then fill up our load with our watts and our VARs. Or we could fill up some of the VARs, the capacitive part, compensating for the inductive part like we talked about with motors. So watts and VARs flow this way. VARs could flow this way, but at the end of the day, 
our total load is here and that's what, we're, what we care about. And where we get it from is here. And so we put all this together to show power flow. The other interesting thing here is this is a one-way valve, a check valve, so that the current can only flow this way. And when you look at current flowing in one direction, that simulates a diode. So a diode only lets current flow one way. In this case, the water valve only lets current flow one way. Well, Dan, I guess I'd say something like uh, that's water under the bridge or something <laughs> like that. Actually, it's a very cool way of explaining voltage and current, so thanks for that. Thanks, Lee. We have a lot of schools and a lot of students that are interested in kind of learning about electricity, and we always tell them, hey, this is a great thing to copy. Go try it for yourself. It's really neat. Maybe there's some other things that students can come up with and, and create analogies to other electrical simulations.